again with another session of Grotto Contribution. Uh, Grotto is a web-based game written in Django, and my friend Wiley asked if I would uh, help him with it, and I volunteered to contribute, so I've been doing just that. I'm into, I've done a few episodes of this so far. I'm doing them here on Twitch, posting them up on YouTube when, they, when they're about to expire, and uh, so you, hopefully you can uh, use this to help you learn Django and deploying Django to some degree. Um, okay, last time we deployed the app to the internet using DigitalOcean. And we got it to here. Um, it looks uh, not not so great, perhaps. Um, uh, no static file. The, the fun little bard there that's usually strumming on that. Uh, um, isn't there? It's no. There's no pretty happening, and we're getting these complaints from um, from our browser about not being able to access files. So let's think about what that might be related to. Um, for starters, there is a setting that I can change. Let's SSH to router prod. And we're just doing a sort of Docker host deployment here using um, using Docker Compose. So if I vim into Docker Compose, I need to change debug back to false. I don't think that's going to fix our static files problem. Um, but it's 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 better that it be that, that debug be off on this prod instance. We're not protecting any so I may flip flop on this and turn it back off again or back on again and back off again. Um, but for now, I, I want it to be off. So let's do a docker compose up D and refresh everything. That should set the new environment variable. And then let's see if we're getting the same uh, behavior. I'm expecting that we will. Indeed. Same same exact thing happening here. Okay, so what's what, what what's happening here is that our static files are not um, they're not being served by the uh, by nginx, right? Essentially, they're just not accessible to um, to the browser to get. And there's a nice a nice package called white noise that lets you sort of fix that in one fell swoop and it prevents you from having to do any uh, special treatment of your static files um, like putting them on s3 or um, or even making special arrangement with your um, with your web proxy so just using white noise it, it solves a lot of headaches, especially on you know something simple. If, if there's a team of people devoted to, to making static files happen, then sure, yeah, put them on edge sites, do all that fun stuff. Um, but you know, if you're just trying to get it out the door, white noise will do you just fine. Actually, I think that white noise will do you just fine on like a real production environment too. I don't think that it's bad. I think that it's it's uh, that it's totally fine. Um, so we're going to do with Django here and there's a, oh, actually we need to go back and, um, yeah, we need to go back and, uh, uh do the installation steps. So they want us to use pip. I'm going to put that into our requirements.txt and immediately our requirements start to deviate from, uh, the, the, dep the dependencies container that we worked on in the last episodes. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. White noise is really small. It was not going to add significant overhead. I'm going to wait until we have a reason to update the um, update. You know this dependency really uh, before I mess with any other thing. 
Um, if we want to update to a new live SAS, that's also kind of a big one. So um, those might make it to the level of updating the dependencies container right now. I don't want to spend I don't want to spend another 50 minutes of GitHub's server time to uh, build a container just to add white noise. I did the dependencies container to save server time, not to spend more of it. Um, All right, so with white noise now available to the container, or at least soon to be available to the container, we're going to do the other uh, set of steps. So settings.py, we need to add a middleware there. This here, middleware, it's supposed to come after security middleware, but above everything else. So let's pop open settings. We've got our middleware here, we've got security middleware, and then right after that, our white noise middleware. And then, um, yeah, let's do it, forever cacheable. I don't think that that, I don't think that the assets are gonna change very quickly in this game. So, uh, why not? Um, yeah. Actually, I'm just going to leave that off. It's it's optional right now. And I'm going to move over to this and make sure that we have static files configured so that white noise can use them. The static files configuration for uh, vanilla Django is like really basic. Um, it comes with a lot of Django comes with a lot of batteries as far as functionality goes, but it's not necessarily going out of its way to make deployment easy on you. Um, it is not hard to deploy, but it's, you know, you just have to get all your ducks in a row, so to speak. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we've got um, our static root that we need to set. They're using the old style OS path join. Uh, I don't think that's in use here. What was that? that was static root. Let's see if the static root is even set. I do see a static root. Cool. And it appears to be fine. Uh, 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 uh. We'll be running collect static whenever we get there. Um, Static files durs. Is that even right? Is that what he's? Um, I think he's got it backwards here. He's got nothing in static there. Never mind. Um, Grotto has static. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm starting to see a little bit of what's going on here. Um, wait, what is going on here? So he's got static. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna open up a uh, um, I'm gonna see actually if this thing's still running from yesterday, Dr. PS. It is. Sweet. So if I bop into that, localhost 8000. Hmm? Hmm? Come on. Won't do it. Okay, well then let's get that back up. Grotto make stop. run bring that thing back up let's see if we get better results here mm. come on why not let's see um, make logs Womp. 
No such service F. Okay, so that's something wrong on make file. Right. Everybody knows F comes in there. Unopen unable to open database file. Oh, right. So I moved around where the database goes. You'll recall. Uh, I put it into a new place. It lives, I want to say it lives in a new file here, new folder called db that will not get committed to the database or to the uh, uh, repo. And let's move this file to db. Okay, so maybe that gives it accessibility. Uh, I think I probably need to update the um, Docker Compose here. Let's check it. No, maybe not. I do need to stop it and start it again. Uh, make stop, make run. So that the changes to the Docker Compose uh, will be put in place. Actually, I, I take it back. I could have just done a make run. That updates Docker Compose. Uh, that updates the deployment when you change the Docker Compose file. So. Um, welcome viewer. Um, so what was we talking about? Yeah, uh, now that this is, well, let's check the logs before I go so far. Make logs. Okay, it's running. Seems fine, except for that. Why doesn't that work? such service python what did i mess that up too exec oh um wow is that is that really wrong what do i what what did i do wrong with oh yeah i need to have uh the container that we're running the command in of course Make migrations. No change. Okay, so uh, there's no nothing wrong with the code. It seems. Why? I'm forwarding the port. Why? Um. Hmm. It's, up, it's got the forwarding. Let's check the entry point, make sure that everything is clean there. Entry point, it's running server. It's doing all that. Okay. It is actually running the server. You can see that it is. What happens if I let's go make logs again? And if I hit save on something, let's just open up models.py here. Let's just add a new line. And then okay, so it do oh, Rado cannot be reloaded. Error and pointing. Oh, alright, alright, alright. Oh, yeah, okay. I see why it's not working because I didn't actually install white noise. That'll do it. So let's make build. That should get the new requirement. All of the old requirements should still uh, be satisfied, but white noise is the new one, and we see that there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here. 
no, no, dang it. Uh, okay, so we're all set up. Let's uh, make run again. That should get Grotto app up to date. And now, mm -hmm. still nada, still nada. Okay. Oh well, it's not done recreating. Uh, all right, make logs. It's giving stuff now. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're running. We're kicking. All right, I see something. I, I think I understand why this happened. The the settings for static files ders and static root are backward here. We want the static file ders to be static, and we want this to be static files. Uh, so here's the rationale there. Static files ders is the list of directories where um, where Django will look for static files. And this is where the static files are living right now. We've got images in there, including BARD. Um, we've got all the CSS that's being cached, all that. Um, the static root is where a command like collect static will put the static files that it finds. So it's going to look for them here in static. And it's going to create a new folder called static files. And that's where the um, <clears throat> that's where the production instance will find its static files anytime debug is turned off. All right, so that is a little esoteric, but that's, you know, you gotta get into the weeds here with Django a little bit. Okay, so we've got a static root. It's set up fine now. Uh, we need to make sure that we're using static wherever we need to. We need to have it enabled, which we do. And then if we want to have if we want to have our yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that. Using white noise in development. I haven't seen this. Maybe this is new. In most cases, this is fine. I think that some improvements that white noise makes to static file handling won't be available in development. It opens up the possibility for things in the air. For this reason, it's a good idea to use white noise in development as well. You can disable Django's static file handling and allow white noise to take over by simply passing the no static option to run server. If you need to remove to add this option every time you call run server. An easier way is to add it in your settings file and add. Ah, I love it. Cool. Maybe that was there. I just didn't. Uh, didn't know about it. Um, okay. Let's do that then and let white noise do the work everywhere. I haven't used this setting before, so um, so we'll have to see how it works, how it does. Um, And then, right, let's put a compression. Your settings file, let's static file storage. Oh boy, there we go. All right, so hopefully that gets our static file situation um, handled. Let's hope. So we should be seeing some reloads happening. Good. If I go here, we should. Oh, if I go here, 
everything should still work. Excellent. Um, okay, let's build a new container. And I want to use the Docker build so that I can put a tag on that thing. I think I do a collect static in here and that that's probably what was breaking static files in uh, in general. Let's see, am I, am I doing a collect static in there? If not, I need to be. Let's open docker file and check it out. I do not run that. So let's run, I want to do that after copying. Mm. Maybe I want to do it as the user. Yeah, let's run um, Python manage.py collect static. And then I think after that, we should be able to like delete the old static thing, but I don't want to mess with that. Actually, let's mess with that. I think we should be able to delete um, uh, uh, static. RM dir Let's try it out. I want to try it out on my local here, so let's just do a make build. Static. Oh, I forgot to put a. I forgot to put a force. Uh, what is it? Uh, collect static. Dang it. Make uh, shell. user for input of any kind. So if I do that, no input. It's like Johnny Five's nightmare. All right, so putting that no input in should fix things up. So let's make, uh, uh, let's try the Docker one again. I'm in the container still. Let's exit out of that. Build it up. Whoa, two viewers. Hold up. Hold up. Is this even real? Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. If I'm doing anything that you want to know more about, let me know in the chat and we can talk about it. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to docker push this thing so to get it up into the repository. And if this works and gives us good CSS and everything, then I'm going to say this deployment is, uh, is on track. And uh, with that... Um, uh, I'll switch gears and work a little bit more on the code base itself. So let's do a docker compose pull. And it's going to freeze on me. I was doing this yesterday, driving me up the freaking wall. another second here and then let's kill it it's like hard 
it's it's so annoying that this is happening. Uh, I haven't experienced that before with Docker Compose as a sort of widespread problem, um, but today and yesterday, man, giving me fits. All right, SSH uh, Grotto prod again, and let's uh, let's try in the screen this time. Screen R. Okay, no screen to be resumed. Uh, oh, that's. Uh, and um, what was I doing? Right, CD pod, and then uh, close pod. get it docker compose you don't want to do the thing it's fine I wonder if this is a like an issue with this TTY some sort of thing that's wrong with the DigitalOcean Ubuntu image or something I don't need that s it's actually Whoa. That didn't need to be there either. Um, come on, Docker Compose. Just freaking pull, would you? Would you one time pull it? This is the most exciting thing on the internet right now, I'm sure. <clears throat> Me trying to get Docker Compose. <sighs> okay, will Docker pull? Let's see if Docker will pull. Docker pull this matters grotto latest. Okay. Awesome. Now let's try a Docker Compose up. Okay. All right. That's all I needed to do. Just pull it with Docker. That's so annoying. Um, well, this is recreating. Let. Oh, there we go. Let's check it out on this end. Server error 500. Why? Why though? Well, let's check the logs. Docker compose logs. Logs. All right. That seems normal, normal enough. Nginx, what's Nginx have to say about the matter? Nothing, doesn't have nothing to say about the matter. Well, I don't like it. Jenkins login. Okay, people trying to people trying to do their worst. Check out them exploit. I only imagine that's one of you viewers out here trying to do the thing. Uh, oh wow, this is a fun one. Damn, the internet just gets pummeled. Everything on the internet, I imagine, gets pummeled with this crap all the time. There's people trying to find an exploit.
people just trying to find an exploit. That's fun. Okay, why are you doing this to me now? Did something happen? Uh, let's docker compose down. It's gonna freeze. I'm just gonna give it a minute here. Bringing it down was broken. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm gonna assume that there's some issue with Docker Compose right now, and revert to an older version. I'm gonna see if that's even uh, something that's reasonable. So um, I think it should be Docker Compose is just a file. So I delete that file. I get an older version. No big deal. Uh, let's do it. Uh, SSH grotto grotto prod. And Docker compose version. <laughs> Docker compose release notes. Let's revert it to. 1.28.3 and then there I put something in the readme grotto readme about this droplet setup I was using this I don't need sudo but that's fine and I can replace you with a 3 probably and you'll work fine. It's cool. So now doc, uh, let's go get the right folder here. See so the prod. Uh, Docker pose down. Ha. Okay, it's worked before, so I, it may be luck uh, that that uh, worked. But um, wow. Still server error. Why though? Tell me why. Um, I have an idea as to why. has to do with that um, debug setting. Once this thing stops, we'll have a look at it. Veeam uh, docker compose. Let's set you to whoa. Hopefully would see hey hey there we go all right so this is telling me then what the problem is uh, the problem is that the setting allowed hosts um, it can't be a wild card whenever debug is um, whenever debug is uh, false so I have to use the actual IP address because we don't have any DNS yet. Let me ask Wiley if he wants me to give it a little DNS love.
I was just asking if he wants me to use a uh, if he wants me to use this matters.net, which is my um, which is my uh, uh, personal website there. Make grotto.thismatters.net for him, and it would be not be a problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, build it again. Uh, the the reason we're building is because we changed that setting. Uh, we'll push it. We'll bop over here. Let's vim our Docker compose again and change um, this word to tr uh, to false. False. Again, it just needs to be not true, like any other thing than true, and uh, and it'll work fine. So now let's docker compose pull. And here's where we see that we got lucky that one time. That there's still some underlying issue with docker compose or this TTY or shell or something. Right, that's fine. I'm not mad or tired. Um, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Docker. Pull. Yep. <clears throat> Freaking joking me. Okay, so it's yeah, it's seeming more and more like this is a, a, a TTY problem. Oh well, I like it. I can work around this. It's giving us that new hotness. It not giving us that new hotness. Come on, man. Does Django not like IP addresses as allowed hosts? Okay. Let's flip this thing back to true again. And let's uh, up it. Should be created. Uh, okay, bad gateway this time. Okay, it works again. So I don't know what the deal is. Let's check. Let's see about Django and uh, allow host. Um, new feature won't fix didn't get oh wait version 1.10 uh...
Okay, so they didn't update that, but does it not accept an IP address, like a single IP address? Let's read the stack over. Django 1.5, this is asked in. Very satisfying answer. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with that. That's just an advertisement. Okay, so it doesn't seem to like having an IP address there. It doesn't want to work at all, so that's fun. Um, but I'll just leave it as is for now with debug on, and uh, that's fine as we go through this uh, this debug phase. Um, I'm gonna let Wiley know. This seems right to me. Um, I need to create a super user here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that next. Uh, you know, the app won't really work right without a super user uh, able to set things up a hair. Um, actually, maybe I can do it. Mm. Well, I'm gonna want a super user either way. So let's let's just make myself one. Uh, here I am. I should be able to do docker compose uh, exec uh, app. And then we'll just pull up a shell. And we can do dot slash manage dot py create super user. And I want to be me, Paul. And I want to have my email address which I don't really want to put on the stream here, so I'll deal with that later. Paul at somewhere.com. And then I want a real password for this one, so let me just gen one real quick. Um, Word here, I'm gonna paste it in, I'm gonna paste it in again. Cool, super user created. Let's leave that. And then we should be able now to log in as that user. Cool, here I am. I can go to admin and everything looks to be working. Cool. Um, let's make a character test.
we have a character test now. So if I go back to, um, I go back here, I enter, I'm at the Adventurers Guild, I should be able to create a character. Um, green, uh, no, that's more true. And then I view my character and I, <laughs> Ernesto jacked in the human. A bipedal mammal with smooth skin and reddish hair on his head. Forest green bikini, I'm into it. Ernesto jacked in work as a broadcast news analysis <laughs> analyst before embarking on their bittersweet quest to find the legendary steel obelisk. Ooh, Maxine the Quiet Barracuda. <laughs> Isotonicity. Okay. Swartness. <laughs> Impudacy is pretty right on. Um, all right. I enter the grotto. I probably get, yeah, I can't enter because there's no rooms. There's no freaking rooms. So let's go to rooms. And we should be able to add room to map. I'm going to just add a few. And then that gives us the ability to uh, go back to our character sheet and we should be able to enter the grotto. And I'm in the hot pink room. Sweet. Everything looks great. So let's send that along to Wiley. Let him know that everything is pumping on all cylinders. And I think that concludes what I want to do for deployment, at least right now. Um, let's check the to-do list and make sure that we don't have anything outstanding. Static files is working. Oh gosh. Uh, handle SCSS better. Actually, we don't need to. As it turns out, not a problem if static files are uh, are working correctly. Still haven't gotten to test the CI pipeline. That's waiting on Wiley to um, merge this branch. <coughs> so we'll see how that goes a little bit later. Um, but I do think that we can. Uh, fix these last two items and then um, I can check this one off up here because uh, DevOps concerns are dealt with for the most part. There's still a few more to think about but um, until we have until we have a domain name and can put debug equals true there's no reason to uh, worry about those other DevOps concerns. So let's make the logout functionality work shouldn't be too bad let's check it out it's up here there's a button that says log out and literally nothing happens when you click on it literally nothing so account uh, accounts is where I want to be this is just the lazy man's way to check what your URLs are so log out is one that should work, right? If I go there and I'm logged out. Uh, it doesn't take me to a very good template. Um, it's kind of ugly. And I think that that's where I would go if I was not an administrator as well. So what we'll want to do is overload that view and provide, uh, or overload that template rather and provide some, some better log out behavior uh, but we we do have log out it, it's there it's totally totally a thing uh, let's go back and let's look at it's it's called log out so or sorry log out so we ought to be able to just reference that directly let's find our base template and see where that stuff comes in header.html okay let's open up oh Let's open up our header.html and 
Huh, cool, we got some emoji going on up here. Emojis. Um, pew, pew, pew. We need to do URL. Let's do it in here. URL logout. And uh, that's not going to update on the prod site just yet. Oh boy. This is uh, going to get untenable soon. Uh, soon I'll have to split up the settings files. Local hose. There we go. Um, I click on log out. Logged out. Let's try it again with a non admin character. Let's go to local host 8000 and then. We'll enter and I'll log in as Paul2. And I'm here. If I click on log out, it takes me to that Django page. It doesn't quite look how we want it to look. So um, let's look at the login page. And uh, take our cues from that. In fact, let's also open up the use uh, I want to say it was grottos uh, maybe it's not grotto where did that come from uh, <laughs> Not static, sorry. Uh, let's look in templates, registration, login. Okay, so that's. Uh, where does that actually get used? Is that just a built in? I think that might just be sort of Django magic. Let's save a copy of this as log out. And let's call. Just say in here, bye, Felicia. Pooh, why didn't it do that? Do I need to mm -hmm. let's look at all the URLs here. Register accounts. Is login.html referenced anywhere? It is not. Okay, let's look at the Django auth. Yes, here we are. Accounts. Do, 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 Ah, 
It's because I named it wrong. <laughs> Needs to be logged out. It's a better name. <laughs> All right. That's excellent. <laughs> so it shouldn't now have right it shouldn't have that it shouldn't say log out here maybe it should say log in there let's fix that header um, so I should be able to use like request.user um, is anonymous or something like that let's do if request.user is anonymous. Log in. And then here we'll do else if they are they are logged in, then they may be an admin. Cool. So if you're not logged in at all, well, if you if you just navigate there, then you, you, you get sent to this. Um, <laughs> you should be able to do the call. Takes me in here. I should be able to click log out, and everything is cool. Good. Um, so we check that off. And that's awesome. Now for code of contact slash cookie acknowledgement. Um, the notion there is that after you register, before you are a full user, you have to um, um, you have to um, like uh, ch check on a thing that says that you agree to you you know agree to have cookies and agree to uh, be cool and not be a jerk. Um, so we want to have a little page that comes. Uh, Little page that comes after. How come this is? Oh, because I didn't fix it. <laughs> Let's open that back up. Header.html. HTML. Let's do log in. And then if I refresh that, I should be able to click log in and it takes me to the. Okay, cool. Uh, so if I'm registering, I'll type in, you know, some name. Poopy. And it'll it takes me straight here, right? Instead, what I want is to have anybody who hasn't agreed to the rules be sent to a rules page that will uh, you know give them a chance to leave if they don't want to agree to the rules or give them a chance to agree to the rules and they can move forward. Um, we, what we don't want is like the second time somebody logs in, having already accepted the rules, to be confronted with the rules again. Uh, that would be bad. That would be just annoying as a user, right? I don't want to have to agree to the rules every single time. I already did it. It's fine. So let's um, let's uh, let's put something in there about that. Um, and here we already have the register view set up. And we immediately log the person in, and then uh, stuff happens. Um, specifically, uh, um, we send a, we send the the user along to the guild. Um, what I want is for really any page that you're on, any, any logged in page that you're on to have this behavior that requires that you have 
uh, accepted the terms. Um, so let's think about how we are enforcing that login in the first place, right? And to explain what I mean, I'm going to open a, a private tab, go to local. It doesn't let me. It sends me to this accounts login page because I need to log in before I can access the guild page or any room page or anything like that. So let's see what we did to make that happen. If we go to um, uh, 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 character builder room uh, um, views, then we'll see that we're using the login required mixin. And uh, that's built into Django. It does. Um, it does a specific little check um, and then forwards you along to a different place. So my intent here is to sort of uh, maybe not necessarily um, uh, rewrite that for myself, but you know, I can, it's open source code. I, I can look at it and use it. So let's go find Django com contrib auth mixins, we would GitHub. I'm going to go to Django, the Django, we're going to, I don't have that starred yet, oh my, uh, Django, Django, and where did we say that lived, we said that lived in contrib auth mixins, Django, contrib auth, woo, Misclick off mixins, and here we're gonna find the login required mixin. All right, so it's actually a a, um, a subclass of access mixin, which I've never looked at. Abstract CVV mixin that gives access mixin to the same customizable functionality. Cool. Um, so I'm, you know, there's a permission required mixin and a login required mixin and a user passes test mixin, which is cool. This is what I want to overload. User passes test mixin. And I'm just going to um, I'm going to use that here. Which one? Which one? Well, uh, really what I want to do is have a have a um, just like I use action mixin as a uh, as a mix in across the rest of the app I want to have a sort of global thing that's going to deal with both the login required and this test um, so let's let's get on that um, action mix in is not necessarily linked to a login required situation but login required and accepting the terms are they're tied together um, explicitly so let's do a um, let's do a, a, a new class here that is um, user accepts terms mixin and I'm going to inherit from user passes test mixin and then let's put Am I not using that here? I'm not using that here. So I will just do user passes test mixin mixin. And let's look at the let's look at the thing there. We have to implement a test function. We should define the no permission. Uh, behavior possibly I think it'll probably do what we want as long as we have all of the uh, right um, right stuff put in here Not login URL 
settings log. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we should be able to just set our login URL um, directly. I'm grabbing the other attributes here just in case they're uh, they're useful. Redirect field name should just be. I think they. No, oh, they're using that. I'm just going to keep using that because I don't want to mess with it. Oh, you know, I don't really need to mess with it at all because I don't want to change it. Permission denied message. Um, not going to mess with that either. Not going to raise an exception. I just want it to do. Uh, I want it to send us to a um, to a. Uh, um, To a specific URL for accepting terms. So let's. Where where should that live in our URLs here? Um, register. I'm thinking register and um, uh, there can be a sub. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll just make terms as a as a URL. So login URL here is going to be terms, and the we need to have a test. So test func self. Is it just self, or is there a? Yeah, just self. Uh, so for this, we want to see. If request.user, rather self request.user, user accept terms. Um, right now, I don't have a uh, an attribute on the user like that, but recall, oh crap, did we not make a custom user? Oh, we did, in models, models, grotto models, where are you at grotto models? Ah, we did it here. So if I just create a new field, then we can uh, utilize that for this term acceptance redirect. So accepts terms equals models dot boolean field fault equals false cool um, so with the test function let's see let's read the docs again deny request permission error if test function method returns false. So if they have not accepted terms, it'll return false, and that will send them to um, the handle no permissions URL, which uh, which we uh, haven't quite built yet. Right? We assigned that there should be a URL called terms. We still need to make that view. Um, and then I wanted to do one other thing here. I wanted to have our um, uh, our um, let's let's do a fun thing class login required mix in uh, and that's gonna have um, the login required uh, base login required mix in. And the user accepts terms mix in. The idea here being that it's easier to use one mix in than two. Uh, um, I need to do a little fun thing here. Base login required mix in rather as base required base login required mix in. And then instead of using um, this. Uh, I'm going to use from grotto.views import 
login required mixin. Let's find them. Views, map builder views, character builder views. I don't want to do it here, so uh, let's let's be careful about that. Um, yeah, I'll just fix it manually over here, changing that to grotto login required mixin like that, and then we'll do the same thing in map builder. Give it a U and put it down here. Okay, so that ought to give us the behavior that we want. We don't have a terms yet. Let's see what happens if we go to register and we do. Oh, well, it's going to freak out because we haven't done the migration yet. Um, no problem. Let's hold off on doing the migration until we have looked at um, this URL and made, a, made a, a view for it, made a page for it. Um, I want to have a view here, same place as register view. We can do class terms except view. It's going to be a form view. Um, and we're going to have a pretty simple form on that. It's going to be like one checkbox that says, I agree. Um, and let's make that form now. Accept form. It's going to be a form. Um, there's, like I said, only one field here, and that is uh, accept. Um, Let's let's fix this. Wait, off? No, that's not right. From Django import forms, 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 forms dot form. This is forms dot uh, boolean field. Class oh. terms accept form. And then def form valid select form. Um, so we don't save it like we did above, but we do we do want to advance them to the next uh, the next place success URL is going to be guild Never mind. I take it back. Ignore me. Um, yeah. What we need to do is check if they actually um, accepted the terms, and if they did, we have to save that to the to the user. Uh, so let's check if form dot. Uh, clean data accept terms um, so if they did accept the terms then this will be um, true is true 
to want it to be. Uh, I don't. I don't want to have any sort of truish values coming through on that. It, it should be a boolean, um, and and so I want to be careful if it comes through as a string or anything like that. Um, some people might call that silly, but I don't care about those people. Um, so if form accept terms, then we're going to say self dot request dot user dot um, accept terms equals true. And we're going to save that user self dot request dot user dot save and. That should send us to the guild after that. If they didn't accept the terms, um, if they didn't accept the terms, then you know perhaps we redirect them somewhere. I don't think it's a problem if they if we just send them through uh, because they they shouldn't advance either way. No, no problem. Um, so then, let's work on the um, the template. Yeah, we didn't give a template name yet, so let's give a template name, and let's see what we can do about that. Template name equals registration slash accept terms Let's make that file. I just want to stick with an easy template here. And actually, I think register has a form on it even, even better. Let's duplicate you. And let's do uh, accept terms.html. Form.errors, bam, bam, bam. to do without being very dramatic about it. So let's find our URLs. Where did they go? I had them open, didn't I? I didn't, maybe. URLs for Grotto. And we're going to make a new URL here called, uh, what the heck did we call it? Uh, no, we didn't. What terms? It's going to be terms except view. This has a name like terms. It doesn't have an import yet, though, so let's do that. Terms except view. And now everything should be working except not. shouldn't be it doesn't like that default business oh right because it uses something like initial or something like that okay so here we are, we're registering a new account. I'm going to call it Paul3. There's no column exceptions. OK, that's fine. That's what we expect from this. I forgot to uh, make migrations. And I should be able to make migrate as well. Oh, 
make stop and make run will do the migrations for me. Give this a second, and uh, if everything goes to plan, then uh, we're we're about done. We're about done with the uh, with this with this uh, task. All right, game's running. Call four this time. Are you kidding me? I don't think that's true. I'm already logged in, I think. Let's see if I can go to guild. Uh, nothing rendered on that form. Uh, it's probably my fault if I had to guess. Section, center blog, form. Okay, it has the thing. Oh, I forgot to do form as table. Uh, where did it go? Had her go away. Views are fine. Views are fine. Map builder are fine. URLs are fine. Accept terms. There we go. I have to do uh, form dot as table, I think. I haven't messed with forms. There we go. Accept terms. Play. Takes me back to register. Because something got screwy. Uh, enter. Okay. What? Let's check the logs. Uh, nothing. Okay, so that's fun. Let's check on some stuff here. Let's see what the clean data looks like. Form dot clean data. Is it what? Hold up. Why? Why? I think it's behaving the way I want it to. Uh, I mean, not exactly. It's it's close. Handle no permission. Self raise exception or user is off. Authenticated. Oh. Oh, okay. So the behavior here is not exactly what we want. Right? Handle no permission seems. to um, seems if the user is authenticated to bring up this permission denied business. And that's not exactly what we want. I don't, I don't love that implementation, I'm not gonna lie. We're going to update that to just use redirect to login. Result login URL. Result, result, uh, 
Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on there, obviously. I'm just going to copy all of it. Ugh, if I can remember that I'm not in a console. Um, so this is uh, def. skipping that check um, that's blocking uh, a logged in user from seeing the page. So we're here now. I click enter. Okay, let's do this again. Uh, Localhost 8000, enter. Not logged, what? Jerk. Excuse me. Oh, right, because I don't have these functions. URL parse, resolve URL. Even, am I even logged in? Enter. Okay, I'm just gonna open a new tab here and we will get to the bottom of this. Open host 8000, G, enter. Why is it doing that now, I wonder? It's taking me to accept the terms. Um, it's, taking, it's asking me to accept the terms before I uh, get punched over to the um, to the uh, login page let's see about reversing the order of these the MRO matters a lot with this login required mix in so just changing that order hopefully fixes this problem Localhost 8000, I hit enter. Why am I there though? It's bothersome. I don't think that was right. I think it should be base login first because we want to check the login before we check the terms business. Um, but why is that coming up first?
Well, I don't like it. No, sir, I don't like it. Well, what happens if I click this? I click it. And then I go... Let's do call it 7. And it takes me back to accept the terms again. Okay, and I've gotten into a loop. Okay, well, I might have to cut this um, stream before I figure out this problem, but we will figure it out in the next. Sincerely not logged in right now. Okay, something is happening. I don't think that. I don't think that this is firing. I don't think that this is triggering at all. Not seeing not seeing that happen. I'm not seeing this print occur, which it should. Why is it taking me to register and not to log in? What? Okay. Okay, maybe taking this shortcut, trying to take this shortcut, didn't quite work out so well for me. Um, not to worry. 
I've used a pattern before. Let me reference that here. There it is. Got it. Um, I think that the issue here is that um, I'm not I'm not requiring login for terms accept. Yeah, the order of operations of this thing was getting off. So let's close you again, this private tab, and open up a new one. Localhost, if I try to go to guild, it's asking me to log in first. Paul, four. Uh, actually, let's use Paul, two. It takes me to this next. I accept. I hit play. And it takes me to register again? That's not right at all. Hmm. I don't even know how register is getting in there. Check that. I want to understand what that is. Path, build absolute URI. state is not being preserved it's not being saved here for some reason I'm not getting the form valid where's the damn template here it because it didn't like it the form was invalid okay all right so we had a little knot that got tied up in there and it was because I copy pasta I copied the register.html file completely and I didn't update where the action posted to so it was given me fits in addition, I wanted to make sure I had to make sure that the order of operations was good. Uh, if for whatever reason this login required mix in popped that it should do terms accept, then um, it'll try to do terms accept and say, oh wait, I need to be logged in first and redirect to login. So a little one, two, three action there. Oh man, sorry about that clap earlier, really. probably busted up your eardrums. Uh, let's do this one or two more times just to make sure everything looks right. Localhost 8000, enter. 
my one. I'm just gonna do all ten. I have to accept the terms. Hit play, and there I am. Create a character. Uh, view my character. Get me a robot. And well, okay, let's look at the header again. Something's weird about the header. Something unexpected about the header. Header.html. Let's close that. Let's read. He is Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see why. He put in some emoji in here to um, sort of class it up a little bit. The issue is that he's not comparing, he's, he's using the lowercase uh, name for the kind. So it's not a problem, we just fix this to dot lower. And there we are. Got the little, the little emoji now. Cool. Uh, let's enter the grotto and let's see what happens. Whitewash room, yellow kite face room, whitewash room, robin's egg room. Beautiful. Beautiful bean footage. All right. That is. I think that's all I was planning on doing today. Um, I'll let Wiley put in the code of conduct and cookie acknowledgement, the actual copy of that, because um, I don't know what it, what fun stuff it should say. Uh, let me put a little placeholder in for that. Uh, if I can even find the file again, I got so many files open over here. There we go. Let's do. Um, Here are my terms. Take them or leave them. And let's log out. If I log in again as Paul 10, it should not confront me. It doesn't. Let's log out again. I think I think I have another couple characters I can iterate or a couple uh, users I can iterate through here so Paul 2 doesn't bug me about it uh, Paul I bet one or more of these got created cool accept terms play easy peasy easy peasy okay so let's finish this up and close out this stream um, the finishing up that I have to do is to check all the code and get it checked in and commit it and push it. Oh, I take that back. I take that back. I want to do one more thing. I want to push up a new version of the container with all these changes that I've made up to the production instance so that Wiley can uh, ooh and ah at them. So we'll push that up. Should finish any moment now. And then I should be able to pull And I should be able to up the. And then if I navigate myself over to that page, and I enter as me. Hmm. What? Oh, yeah, it's because I'm not using my symbol password there. 
I'm using a generated password there, which I need to retrieve. Love it. Accept the terms, play, and there we go. Can I make you a cake? No, I'll come down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, then now that that's up there and everything looks great about it, um, I will commit all the code. Docker file, yeah, so we, we did a little DevOps stuff, collecting up the static, got everything in the right places. The removing this, the, the um, old static files just makes our container a little bit smaller, our image a little bit smaller. Make file, made a few changes there, little fixes. Added a requirement, no problem. These settings are going to become problematic soon. Um, what I'm going to do to address that is to split out all the settings file. Let me make note of that. Split out the settings file into the various uh, domains that we work in. That should be a DevOps concern. Split uh, settings. tag um, we fixed everything up for white noise and to get the database in the right place and and all that looks fine we fixed the header um, so that it uses the emoji and we fixed this up so that it it looks a little bit more correct. URLs, we added the terms URL. We added a form and a view for the terms. And we sort of concocted this, um, this mix-in. And, and combined up two mixins rather, rather to ensure that our user is logged in and has accepted the terms. Added a field to models to track who has accepted the terms. Updated where we're getting our login required mixin in a couple places. And then some new files, the new template, the new template, the migration, and this Docker ignore. Uh, I'm going to add to that Docker ignore actually to make sure that a database, a dev database, doesn't make its way into our into our image. So dot docker ignore. Let's add db. Okay. So DevOps in order. All right. Let's commit that. Let's push it. And uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope you found something useful here. And I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves.